Hello and welcome to video two in this series on the Age of Discovery. This one's about the Columbian Exchange. In SOL 4D, we will describe the Columbian Exchange, including its impact on native populations by completing cause and effect graphic organizers. Now here's the big picture. The discovery of the Americas by Europeans resulted in an exchange of products and resources between the Eastern and Western Hemispheres. That's the Eastern Hemisphere as in Europe and Africa and Asia, and the Western Hemisphere as in North and South America. So here's the Columbian Exchange map. You've seen this before, but I want to highlight a couple of things. First of all, there's things that you might think of as very specifically European, like tomatoes and peppers in Italian food, you know, in pasta and on pizza. But actually those came from North America originally and then were brought in by Europe and taken in to be part of their culture. And going over to the New World, you can see some things that you might associate with, say, the Caribbean, like bananas and sugarcane that actually originally came from Europe. Also coming from Europe was wheat and rice and barley and oats, a lot of grains that hadn't existed in North America before, and livestock like sheep and cattle and pigs and horses. But perhaps most importantly and most devastatingly, there was disease that came with Europeans. There was smallpox, influenza, typhus, and measles, malaria, diphtheria, whooping cough. So coming over from Europe was this disease that ravaged the population there. But coming from North America was this important little thing, the potato, which we'll talk about in just a second. Because European lifestyles changed with these new products. Uh, corn being brought over brought a whole new way of consuming the number of calories you need each day. But even more than corn, potatoes led to huge population growth in Europe which may have been cut down on a little bit because they also adopted smoking tobacco at the same time. This is a very early image of a, a gentleman smoking tobacco. European would see that roughed collar. It's really great. And the mustache is pretty good. Okay, but here's the graph of human population over time, starting from very, very early in time, 6,000 years before zero. And we are at 1,500, remember, just after 1,500 now. And you can see here's the Roman Empire happening right around zero. They're tracking that population and then here's the Black Plague. You can't even see that really affect anything much in this population growth chart. And then the world, New World is discovered right here, right before 1500. And then the crops that they bring back to Europe help start the second agricultural revolution in Europe, which leads to an enormous population spike, an unbelievable, staggeringly huge population spike. And a lot of that was caused by the humble little potato. So, Native American lifestyles were changed in a very different way. As new animals were brought over, uh, horses provided new mobility for Native Americans, and in fact were very quickly brought into the cultures of uh, Plains Indians in North America. And they are still important parts of those people's cultures. And that new mobility allowed totally different ways of living in the North American landscape. Cattle provided a new food source and helped also compete with wild food sources like buffalo. But pigs, for instance, was a way that these new animals caused conflict. Uh, because pigs had a tendency to escape from European farms, destroy native crops, which then caused Native Americans to kill those pigs, which then got Europeans mad because they viewed themselves as having ownership of those pigs, and the Native Americans didn't view ownership as a thing you could have of an animal. And so there was a lot of miscommunication and a lot of war started over pigs. But the greatest catastrophe in human history happened on the side of the Native Americans. Smallpox and other European diseases killed as much as 90% of the population in North and South America. And here's a contemporary depiction of smallpox in Mesoamerica. You can see the little dots on these figures. Those are raised welts. And even if you survive smallpox, a lot of times you'd be permanently uh, disfigured by those raised dots. Plantation agriculture also, also took a huge toll. Plantation agriculture uh, it was these huge farms that used forced labor or slave labor to grow cash crops. You can see here the forced labor of Native Americans in this case, and then the large buildings of the church, and then the housing for the workers, and then all these fields. And they're growing cash crops as in things you'd uh, send back to Europe and then sell, or make into other things which you would then sell. And this practice started in the Canaries, which are off the coast of Africa, and the Azores, which are off the coast of Portugal. But the Spanish and Portuguese brought it to the New World because it had been so successful in those places. And they basically learned how to run a plantation with African slaves in these island chains 
first and then discovered the new world was such a perfect place to uh, bring in and, and uh, plant that kind of agriculture. The result was that indigenous economies were totally destroyed and it severely damaged the environment. And indigenous here means the native people of an area. And then, because disease and labor were killing the Native Americans so rapidly, Europeans began to bring in African slaves. And so then slavery became closely connected to race in the New World because you had the Native Americans had lived there first, and so they were convenient targets for forced labor. And Europeans were coming there as owners and powerful people in that society, but slaves were brought in as this unique subclass of people just to be exploited in that context. And so the Europeans came up with lots of different ways to justify this very unfree position that they were putting these people in. They were trying to make themselves believe that it was the right thing to do. And so they deployed science and religion and reason and lots of different things to try and convince themselves that this was fine. So for instance, here's an example. Um, this was a way of classifying people based on facial structures. And you can see here that they're trying to say these Anglo-Teutonic, as in Northern European facial structure, comparing it to the Irish Iberian, as in Ireland and also uh, Portugal and Spain, which seemed disconnected, but there was this whole idea that the Irish had come from this Iberian peninsula to begin with. But what you can see they're trying to do here is connect the facial structures of this race that they were trying to make a thing uh, to the African race over here, which the word that they used was Negro. Um, and they're trying to go like, hey, look at this. Aren't these so similar? We're justifying this to ourselves. So the start of scientific racism and uh, this kind of race-based slavery begins during this time period.